Everybody welcome. It's not ASMR. I just wanted to start quiet and then maybe like get a little louder as time goes on. But uh, you know, we're because it's literally 7:42 a.m. on a Monday morning. Um, I woke up at 6 a.m. to the baby crying, and then I, I was like Michael Scott, right? Like in the GIF, I was like, "No, please, God!" And then, like, she stopped crying in like 15 seconds. The damage is already done. It's like it, it, it's a it flips a switch in your adrenal glands. They they don't stop. So you know, but I I like uh, I like being up early, honestly. Uh, as long as I feel good about it. I feel like, I, you know, you trust your body. If my body had said, go back to bed, then I would be like, I'm going to go back to bed. But instead, it was like, get up, have, uh, you know, eight cups of coffee. Okay, so I'm, I'm using this um, randomizer here. This is just a test. This is from trpgstuff.com slash Isaac. If I click the randomize button, it tells me who I should be and where to go. Be the Forgotten and go to the Beast. What the heck is the Beast? <laughs> I think the Beast is uh, is true ending, right? I mean, come on. If you're going to make an application like this, like you got to use the, the real nomenclature. The Beast? Nobody knows what it is. It's called true ending in my world. Okay, here's your seed, by the way. DD2G131N. Um... Again, just a trial run here as I, I kind of figure out what the heck I want to do, uh, like, long-term in Isaac. Probably some kind of, like, you know, random, random streak, but we'll see. Seems like a cool tool. Thank you, TRPG, for uh, for making it. I'm kind of operating under the assumption that, you know, you're, you're okay with it being used. I mean, you made it to be used, I'm sure, but then also I saw that you posted on the subreddit and you were like, thank you for posting my application, so... I, if, if anything's changed there, just, uh, you know, edit your post and say, please stop, you're, you're not well equipped to actually understand this, you don't know the names of uh, any of the bosses, you know, you gotta get a license to make toast in your own dang toaster, and, and so on and so forth. Anyway, I'm doing well. I, I will say, just to head this off at the pass, I think there might be... Some people out there who are like, you know, what, what are your thoughts on, like, not doing a random streak until you get every item in the game unlocked? And I'm just like, you know, well, yeah, they're all unlocked. They just haven't all been picked up, I guess. But I'm like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm 32 years old. Very nearly 33. I've, I've reached the, the age, it's not super old, but I, I'm, I'm certainly at the point, I would say, where, like, I would say that even though my birthday is in, you know, the last, like, 90% of the year, uh, I feel like I age on January 1st now. I know that it might sound like that doesn't make any sense, but I no longer, like, do the math calculation. Uh, and if we're going to true ending, by the way, well, then we're in a good spot here. Um... You know, this doesn't make, like, mathematical sense, but I no longer feel like, oh, I want to do the math, you know. I, I just want to do current year, subtract my birth year, and then if I'm off by one, you know, at least I'm, I'm saying I'm older than I actually am, and as a result of that, you know, people aren't going to take it as putting on airs. But this is a, a very roundabout way of, of saying, um, I don't worry about the, the, the vanity trappings of whether or not the streak would appear to be legitimate because he's never picked up, you know, death certificate on an unseated run or whatever. It, it strikes me as a technicality. You know, I just want to play the game. I, I'm, I'm not a vain man. I, I subscribe to what Tom Waits said about vanity. When asked by Men's Journal what role should vanity play in a man's life, Tom Waits said... Buy a mirror you look good in, which I think is a is a great quote. Um, I don't I don't know for certain if I've ever taken this, so I'm gonna. Uh, I bet I have. Uh, well, you know what? They might only have been on challenges though. So, uh, I believe this gets it, it's like tainted Judas, right? 
every time you kill an enemy, it charges up, and it, it's one of those items that has, like, uh, it's, it's less... <laughs> it's less about, like, do you have an active charge, and more about, like, how much of the gas tank do you want to use, I think. Like, Berserk is actually really good. Um, I think this is, is an interesting idea for sure. Well, I guess we won't be going into the boss trap room. I gotta think about this one. I gotta remember, it's, it's a shorter run for sure. Hanged man. There's some irony there, I suppose. Um, I gotta remember, it's a shorter run. If you're only going down... I can't believe... That's how you know I was ready to get up early in the morning this morning. When I, I'm able to dodge that uh, spike trap two times in a row. 15 cents, but... Uh, not that... Oh, 16 cents. Now you're speaking my language. I think we're just going to head down. I would like to drop a, uh, a trinket. I also th think that the Forgotten is kind of a, a nasty true ending draw, if that makes sense. I, it, it doesn't really, but that's okay. Um, well, all I mean by that is, you know, we're playing a character that gets up close and personal, which can be a little bit uh, dangerous against the horsemen, I would say, in particular. But I don't know, maybe Berserk will help us out there. Either way, I'm feeling like, you know, obviously we got a lot of advantages here. It's like the first time I've ever been super stoked to have bone spurs like it, it seems like it's doing kind of incredible work and i really don't deign to know why quite frankly so it is uh as mentioned 7 48 a.m monday morning but i'm feeling good excited for the week had a fun, like, daddy-daughter Sunday. I, again, I, I know that I talked about it in the... Ooh, I mean, we could swap, but that's a coward's way out. Um, I know that I talked about it in the last episode, but I have, like, very little memory of yesterday. It was a very overloaded day. Um, Kate got the second dose of the uh, COVID vaccine, and she woke up, and it, it's a classic... Uh, let's not call it a folly, because that's a little insulting. Um, but it's a, a, a situation that I've had happen to me, you know, sometimes, sometimes in college, maybe you like overdid it a little bit, uh, on like a Friday night, you wake up on Saturday morning at like 9am and you're like, oh my God, I feel like incredible. I thought, oh, you took my bone heart. I thought I was going to feel like garbage, but I actually feel amazing. Uh, we will, absolutely. And just snag this, I think. Um, and then, like, you know, you, you go and you tell people. You're like, it's I, I can't believe it, but I actually feel amazing. I I'd never thought it would happen, especially considering all the hijinks we got up to uh, last night. And then, like, an hour later, reality actually strikes you. Like, the adrenaline wears off. And you're like, okay, actually, I don't feel as good as I thought I did. She made a tweet that was like, you know, just a light fever, no big deal. And then, like, spent... 80% of the rest of the day in bed. Which, by the way, is completely fair. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Be like, uh, no, sorry, you don't... Uh, you don't, you don't give my permission to sleep off the effects of the dose. So I was on, uh, baby duty. Um, and I, I don't want this to come across as patronizing, you know? Because, like, I think there's definitely the chance that it could. You know what? You know what we want to do? We want to grab this trinket. We want to drop it in the room so that on the way up we can get cracked key. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, by the way, I know that the key is cracked, but I prefer to think of it like in the Twitch parlance. Like, man, that key is so good for us. It's cracked. Gotta whisper when I get excited because it's still quite early. Um, but yeah, what I, what I wanted to, to say is, uh, like with, with my wife, not even really like out of commission, but like, you know, she's still nurse the baby she she had a little bit of playtime with the baby but with, with it being like the first time literally ever that i was on baby duty like the whole day um from from sun up to sundown that's not really fair because the baby does not go to sleep at sundown she goes to sleep at like you know 7 15 p.m <laughs> which by the way kind of sick 
No wonder she was, she was crying when she woke up. She was like, what the heck? I'm, I'm used to, you know, the, the sun being exactly overhead in the sky. And it, it, it's like on the horizon. Well, you know, her, her room doesn't have an exterior window, to be honest. And, they, well, and, and beyond that, I don't know if she would even be able to see out of it. Because she's only about, I don't know, like 23 inches tall right now. Regardless, this is neither here nor there. I'm going to check this. But uh, it, it, it made me substantially... And I've said this before, by the way. This is not like a, a brand new revelation. Um, but it made me like way more understanding of the stuff that like single parents go through. Like if you're... Uh, whether you're a you know, single dad or a single mom and you're, you're raising uh, you know, one kid by yourself, that's hard. I did it for a day, essentially, and even then I had a little help, and uh, I was exhausted. Like, I didn't want to do anything. After the baby went to bed, I was like, just just honestly inject a, a carbohydrate phospholipid slurry into my veins and then just let me go to sleep. <laughs> I didn't even sleep with my earbuds in last night, which is like the, the number one sign that I was like too tired when I went to sleep. Then on top of that, you know, you, you might have uh, more than one kid. And then on top of that, you know, this was also like a Sunday. So all, all I did was I, I went for a bunch of walks. Come on, man. You know, we went to the park. It's cute. You know, she's she's uh, old enough now. She's She's got good neck control. So I can put her in the swing and then just like brace her a little bit and then pull it back and then let her, you know, let give her a lesson in the laws of physics and, and she has a lot of fun with that. Um, but obviously, you know, like on a, on a working day, I don't even know what you do. I, so, you know, again, it, it sounds patronizing, but that's just the way I speak, I think. <laughs> this Isaac goes out to all the all the single parents out there. Especially, again, I, I was only, I, I did it for like a day, and uh, I'm, I'm assuming that starting uh, today, today, my wife will be, you know, not that she does 100% of the stuff, she does more than I do, but, um, you know, it just have, excuse me, oh, because he's got like an internal brain worm or something. Um, not, not me as a human being, although that's definitely possible. I mean, like... Uh, or it's like the anti-soul, right? Like when you when you enter this phase right here, like he sucks in the bullets, or at least affects them. Anyway, I think I made my point badly, but you know, considering it's seven fifty-four a.m. on a Monday, I, I think it was as as er as erudite as possible, <laughs> given the circumstances. So we have a, a bit of a dangerous situation. I think I can embrace just not having to be the Bone Lord at all. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. Uh, not having to be the Bone Lord at all times. You know, we got like really good damage uh, as the as the spirit as well. Just need to not die here. I, I think I have played pretty badly here, but I, I'm, I'm always guilty like as the Forgotten. It's kind of like when you play as Azazel and you, you get uh, jaded or, or you, you start to take your, your strength for granted, you know? You're like, I'm never gonna die. And then all of a sudden you, you realize you've, you've hemorrhaged a little bit too much HP over the course of the entire game. And now like uh, you're, I, I would, wait, didn't I have a hanged man or something, don't I? <laughs> Please, I didn't think the hanged man would be worth anything. I'm realizing the error of my ways because now I could get to that. Maybe I dropped it like a floor ago. It's like literally the one situation where a hanged man could be useful as this character. I, I dumped it being like we have no reason uh, to take it because we can already fly. And, and little did I know. Little did I know. I hope that this makes us charge faster uh, with Berserk, which is an item I probably should be using more. You're not invincible during Berserk, by the way, but you are uh, it's too angry to die, I guess is the, the verbiage. 
It also, as you get more kills, it sustains itself uh, beyond that. But um, if you take lethal damage, you can actually... Oh, dude, just send it. You can live, kill an enemy. Maybe it's Krampus in here? You gotta look. You could live, kill the enemy who's bothering you, and then get HP off of their uh, off of their corpse and, and be totally fine there. By the way, I just realized we got insanely lucky. Who needs a hanged man card? When in Ted, in, in Ted? Instead, you could get Spirit of the Night. And just take it up here. Lucky us. They actually worked out very well. So anyway, yeah. I mean, it just... Uh, you know, it's one of those things I don't want to say... Because sometimes people, like, I take it patronizingly. You know, like, I'll be at a PAX. And people will be like, you know, Hey, what do you do for a living? And I'll be like, oh, I'm a streamer. And they're like, oh, that's a hard job. And I'm like, shut up. You think I don't understand sarcasm? It's actually, like, the easiest job on planet Earth. <laughs> Like, look at what I'm doing right I'm like, no, I woke up at a time that normal people my age wake up. Uh, I could be stuck in traffic right now. You know, like, I've got an awareness of the fact that it's, it's not a, a, a necessarily difficult job in terms of the actual duties that you do. Um, probably should not have gone so hard on this, by the way. Ah, whatever. <laughs> uh, nevertheless, um, maybe, maybe some of these pills... That's pretty bad. That's that's not nice. Um, okay, but that's better, but still bad. So I, I hope it doesn't come across like that. I hope it doesn't acro come across like I'm I'm being, you know, d dismissive. Because I genuinely like, I was exhausted. I was surprised how exhausted I was. Was there HP in here? I think I would like to get more curse rooms. And for three cents, this is a... Ooh, uh, we got a three cent familiar. This, again, this has my vote for, like, being the actual, like, highest amount of excitement to lowest yield that you can possibly get in this game. Anytime we get the Soul of Lilith, we're like, oh my god, it's a free item, and then we use it. And we're like, okay, cool, Rainbow Baby. Even, I've got to be honest, <laughs> Rainbow Baby's... Probably pretty close to like the top of the uh, the list as far as like you know good familiars go that we can get from this. I mean, I'm assuming you can get like a little uh, little brim or little abaddon or something like that, but obviously there's no guarantees. We'll check quickly if it's not there. I'm gonna be honest, and this is a great sign for how this run is going. I don't really feel the need uh, to to really get down into the nitty gritty. Try to find that second secret room. Empty heart. I gotta... Th there's like seven new heart items in this game. In Repentance. That I gotta figure out. You got like candy heart. Empty heart. Whatever hypercoagulation is. Like... I gotta... I gotta learn those... Uh, the sprites. But empty heart is really good, I think. As assuming it works if we... Like, if, if it works. We should be able to play this on the way out. And then maybe get a new bone heart. Because when you get red... <laughs> When you get red hearts as, uh... We get HP ups as the Forgotten. It counts as... Bone hearts. They, they turn into bone hearts. Lucky. So anyway, yeah, that was like... That was my weekend. I got, I got nothing else. Because there was no space for anything else. You know, it was just, uh... It was, it was pure baby 100% of the time. I gotta be... Ugh, dude, I can't. Like, I would love to take this because I feel like it's kind of fun. As, uh... As the Forgotten to have Cursed Eye, but, like, teleporting out of a late-game boss fight? I I don't know. I would I might become the Joker. It's early in the morning, but it's not so early I would refuse to become the Joker. Could set the tone for the rest of the day. You got to be careful too. I don't want to be primed. I have React Court later today. I'll be I'll be dishing out sentences for social faux pas. You, you don't want to make the judge angry before uh, sentencing. Could change everything. 
But I do wish I had more anecdotes. <laughs> but I definitely do not. <laughs> I am I am anecdote bereft. Like like officially. I did I you know this is a recurring segment. Tweets I didn't make because I think that Twitter sucks and increasingly like I'd, I'd love to spend less time on it. So I'm trying to like, you know, make it be the change I want to see in the world. But then I will describe a tweet to you. Um, and then you, you can decide whether or not it would have been funny. Uh, but in, you know, it's an, an ephemeral concept, you know, it, it doesn't. It doesn't exist on the platform forever, so it doesn't serve as a flashpoint to get upset with or anything like that. Um, you know the... Uh, I don't know what kids' drawing does, by the way. You know the, the video of the lady banging on the car window and like going like, Come out! Come out! The tweet was going to be like that video or GIF. And then the uh, body text. Amazon drivers, when they drop off... One tube of toothpaste on my on my front step. <laughs> Look, you can say I'm I'm not trying to insult the the Amazon workers, especially like during the pandemic, they you know kept the entire economy running. Probably like eighty percent of the economy was um, based on home deliveries. I do like sometimes I'll just be sitting here like you know minding my own business. And then I hear, dunk, 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 I can't do it as loud as I'd like. But they, like, dunk, like they smash the door, like, Ugh! And then, like, I rush out to get the package. Um, and they're already, like, you know, 100 meters away by the time I get from my seat to the two meters what the door is. Um, that's not how you construct a sentence, sentence in English. And then I'm like, man, if I, it, I just wish that they would, like, write on the box... Like, hey man, is uh, by the way, I did not play Empty Heart at all. <laughs> I wish they would write on the box, like, hey, uh, like it's just toothpaste. Like, don't don't worry yourself too much over this one. You don't have to smash on the door or anything like that. You could just, you know, is this okay? This is Necropolis too. Hold on, we should use Joker then. Um, and none of these matter because we're almost done with the deals with the devil. Yeah. So, you know, it, the joke may not work. I'm realizing now as I'm explaining it, it may not work. But they also, you know what? I, I think that it still may work. It's just because it's 7, uh, oh, sorry, it's 8.04 in the morning right now. Um, it's not when, you know, people tend to be at their, their funniest. There's a reason they don't do stand-up comedy shows at, like, 8 in the morning. One is because they have a two-drink minimum most of the time, and I, I think that would really mess the rest of your, your day up. <laughs> Having a couple of Long Island iced teas at, like, 8 in the morning on a Monday. Um, and then the other one is people that, people are not ready to laugh. You know, I think we're conditioned in the morning. There's like a period where we're like, uh, where am I? And then after that, it's like, you know, we're conditioned to learn. You know, something about being in the classroom at like 8 a.m. just feels right to me. Uh, terrible performance here on my part, by the way. Oh, uh, sorry, what I meant to say is, oh, we're just trying to make empty hard work. This is a situation, I hate to do it, but... Mama Mega is a is a fantastic play. Oh, I'm sorry, donation machine. <laughs> oh, whoopsie. Um, and I didn't even mean to buy that, but I'll live with it. I think we should donate like all this money back. But uh, it, it's an important item for us because now we can get into boss rush and, and take something and get out. You know what I mean? I, like I, I think I'm gonna die right now. That's my my take on this run right now is I will probably die. So I, I'm hoping you know I'm ma I'm making bold decisions to try to change the world. So what, what's the gist of the joke? Well, it's just the look, okay, this is why I didn't want to tweet it, because now I'm getting lost in the weeds, you know, and the uh, hyper-capitalist anti-union NL, oh, the 
The Amazon worker who has to pee in a Gatorade bottle knocks on my door too loudly. Life's so hard. Look, this is why I didn't want to tweet, okay? It's because of these bad faith arguments. But I have a series of, uh... We gotta... We've already seen the deal with the devil. We don't care. Similarly, we don't really care because we're going to give this up right away. Uh, it's an easy choice, I think. Dark Bum's really, really solid. I have a series of delivery-based, uh... Jokes, though. Like the Canadian service skip the dishes. That's that's one of my all-time classics. People are always begging me, tell the skip the dishes joke. Oh, you mean the one where I say, sure, I'm skipping the dishes, but I'm taking the garbage out two times a day? It's a good one, right? It, and to some extent, it do be true when you think about it. It, it, it does create a little bit more waste. Uh, cool battery. Can't even use it. And then, of course, um, the delivery drivers who... And this is this has become a Flashpoint issue on the stream for sure, but... Um, one of the, the door that uh, I receive packages at most often... Experiment. HP up, tears down. I think that's a dream come true for us. Uh, it opens out. It has, like, I don't know, anti kick technology or something like that so it opens out but when people leave packages at the door they always leave them leaning up against the door because they don't expect it to open out which makes sense okay i understand i mean there's no sticker on it that says like this opens out um but as a result of that every time i open the door i knock over a box or an envelope and sometimes you know you'll, you'll get like two or three things in the same order and the, the the packages will be stacked up in front of the door and I can't even uh, I can't even open it I gotta go around to like the other side of my house and then walk around and go pick them up and then you know walk back to the other section and, and it, look it's not that hard it's not like it's a, a complete catastrophe or anything like that I'm just you know it's uh, <laughs> just is what it oh Oh, oh. Uh, um. Uh, okay, okay. I we can look. I'm, I can't go to the true ending uh, anymore, and I gave up the negative anyway. Right. So this is a is a is a strange situation. But hear me out here. Okay, hear me out. Before you get upset, we still have a way. I think it doesn't matter if you if you screw up what you were trying to do on the run. It doesn't matter as long as when you actually finish the run, you've attempted to do something more difficult. If you skipped out on going to the true ending because you wanted to go to the chest like that's more like resinous you know you, you took the easy way out on that one but that's not what I'm doing what I'm gonna do is try to make the hush fight <laughs> and it's for two reasons one is to get a little bit of extra you know street cred for sure I'm always looking for more street cred um, but then the other one is because that's uh, it allows us to get to delirium which is like the only late game ending that is now accessible to us, unless we maybe play an Eddie room. So, lesson learned. I mean, at this point, I, we're, we're really quickly approaching the mathematical reality of me having screwed up going to the path I was supposed to go to, like just about every way that is conceivable. We've, you know, mindlessly not taken the fool card. We have, uh, you know, taken the negative when we should have taken the Polaroid. We've taken the Polaroid when we should have taken the negative. We've taken uh, Genesis at any point and then tried to go to the, you know, darkroom path. We've, there's uh, all sorts of stuff. That's another one right there. Teleport, <laughs> teleport out via the fool card and then just walk back in and have no means to teleport out. Of course you know what I'm gonna say. 
what I'm going to say is IMO. It would be nice if maybe like once you teleported out with the fool card, it just stayed open or with any card, I guess. Um, but I'm also going to say, you know, IMO. It was totally uh, my problem. You know, it's like genuinely without a doubt, 100 percent my fault. <laughs> so <laughs> kind of hard to uh, have the moral high ground on that one. Did you know they made a new G.I. Joe movie? Uh, I, I was reading an article this morning, because again, I love to learn early. Um, early in the morning is the right time for learning for me. Everybody's different, but... Uh, and and the, the story, you know, the headline, I, I think it was in either Deadline or Variety, just in case you want to find it for yourself. It was trying to explain why G.I. Joe Snake Eyes faltered at the box office this weekend. And uh, I, I found myself, if, if I may be so, uh, let's not say crass, but if I may be so uh, bold, I was like, isn't that on you for uh, expecting a G.I. Joe movie to do well in the year 2021? Well, there goes a bone heart. Sorry, it's not like we're about to fight the hardest boss in the game or anything. And I know how that sounds. It's like, you know, you know I know tons of people that are into G.I. Joe. But, but like, you know, they're, they're not into the... First off, I, d I doubt that you do. Do you really know tons of people who are into G.I. Joe? I'll allow that um, if you, like, are the editor for G.I. Joe Weekly Magazine or something. Probably, let's be honest, semi-annual magazine. Yo, Red Stew is such a huge get here. We have a great luck stat. Like, I, I didn't even really notice, but Ghost Pepper is going to be a slapper here. But I, anyway, look, I don't work in the film industry. Consider myself more of a video essayist, if anything. Um, but I I really, I, I did kind of take offense to the, to the article, if I'm being honest, just because I was like, well, I, I think that the reason uh, that it did poorly at the box office is because uh, it's a G.I. Joe movie in 2021. Uh, nobody asked for it at all. Um, we're still recovering or in the midst of a, a global pandemic that only allowed theaters in a large part of the world to open up, you know, over the course of even like the past couple of weeks. Um, and, and people are largely like uncomfortable or maybe less comfortable at least than they used to be uh, going out and... Uh, you know, sitting in a, in a room that might end up being a little bit crowded. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, nobody cares about G.I. Joe in 2020. <laughs> and again, I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to be rude. But I do think that it's totally true. I'm going to get all the G.I. Joe lovers here. Hey, you can't be mad at me, okay? I'm one of the reasons that G.I. Joe Snake Eyes even exists, okay? I saw the first G.I. Joe movie with Channing Tatum in 2009, I think it was. I saw it in theaters on its opening weekend. Why? Um, because I, I like watching movies, really is what it came down to. And uh, I, I went to the theater. <clears throat> Sorry, the theater. Um, with some friends of mine. And they were like, we're going to go see the G.I. Joe movie. And I was like, I guess I will too. I mean, like, it, at that point in my life, I was still, like, highly confident that it was going to be bad. Uh, maybe even terrible. And it, it was pretty not good. But I still, you know, I was having a fun time hanging out with, with my friends. So, you know, before you get mad at me, you got to recognize, you know, I'm, I'm one of the only people. I actually think that first G.I. Joe movie was like bizarrely uh, successful at the box office, which is a, a big surprise. But no, they did make a sequel, right? <laughs> okay, this is this is good. We have such high damage. He summons flies. We shoot... Uh, I was just going to say thank you. We shoot some fires at them. By shooting the fires at them, we kill them. It keeps our damage high from red stew. You got to be really careful here because we only have uh, 0.6 speed. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, be cautious. <clears throat> Point six speed is the uh, is the melee character, I should say. We're just we're just playing it cool. We're we're not trying to do anything special. We're just trying to be defensive. <clears throat> I honestly think like Ghost Pepper completely saved this. Oh, I don't know if I should be standing there. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, getting that almost 9 a.m. phlegm. You know how it is. That's why they call it uh, phlegm, because it happens in the a.m. I was just like, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm not. I'm, I'm a movie guy, but I'm not like a, an industry guy. Uh, but I, I just, I, I found it very humorous that people were like, we, we can't, we're very puzzled as to why this G.I. Joe movie didn't crush it. And I'm like, man, it's because nobody gives a crap. <laughs> I don't want to necessarily be the, the bearer of bad news, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's because it's, you know, based on a movie, uh, franchise from... Or not a movie franchise, sorry, it's based on a toy franchise uh, from like 20 uh, or th at this point, like 30 years ago, maybe even a little bit more than 30 years ago. I know we got Red Stew, by the way. I know we got Red Stew. We also don't have any money. I can't believe I, I almost made a coherent point uh, at some point during that hush fight, by the way. <clears throat> we gotta do delirium. There's no other option. Like, we gotta, we gotta save a little face here. No one's gonna be like, ah, we. True ending would have been tougher than Hush and Delirium as a melee character, so I'm I'm feeling okay about this. Psychologically, I feel okay. Um, I think it's because it's based on a, a a toy franchise from the 1980s, and then uh, all of the other movies in the franchise that have ever uh, come out are horrible. I think that's the reason, man. I also wonder, like, you know, what the long-term effect of, of COVID on the theater industry is. Like, the last movie, I, I was an avid theater-goer. I would say, like, before, I mean, it, this a, a lot of things have changed in my life over the course of the past, uh, you know, two years. Uh, we, we moved. We got older. We had a child. There was a global pandemic. Take your pick. Um... So there's been a, a lot of stuff going on. We used to be pretty avid avid theater goers. I, I would say like maybe like once every three weeks we would go see a movie. We didn't just go see the Marvel stuff. We saw all sorts of stuff that was like, you know, a pretty good chance it's not going to be that memorable. Like the movie Life starring Ryan Reynolds and Jake Gyllenhaal. Decent movie. And I don't know why that's always like my go-to for like, see, I'm... I'm I support independent, well, not independent, but I support, uh, you know, non-sequel Marvel filmmaking. Um, the last movie I saw in theaters <clears throat> was genuinely Parasite in 2019. And over the course of, like, lockdown, I was like, oh, man, I can't wait for things to get, like, open again so I can go back to the theater. I like the theater. I've, I've never been one of those guys who's, like... You know, I mean, that sometimes I hate some of the other patrons. Mostly because, you know, if you go see, like, a Marvel movie and you have to go to the bathroom halfway through, like, I'm going to spoil it for you. In the men's bathroom, like, 30% of guys are washing their hands. It's, it's a very bizarre thing. They're like, I don't, I don't want to miss a single moment of, you know, yellow jacket. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> I, honestly, I really like Berserk, but um, but I, I, I enjoy going to the theater. It's, it is pricey, but you know, all things considered, it's not uh, that expensive of a of a night out for two people. You can easily add like a dinner to it, and then you know, you got almost like a you know, it, it's like a a, a, a pre made date that comes out of the box. Plus, I just like seeing movies, man. People rag on the movies sometimes. They're like, what a, what a boring, like, you know, date idea. Whether you're, you know, dating or, or, you know, married. You still like to have a date night now and then, right? 
They think like, oh, I, I, I don't like it because you, you don't get to talk for two hours. I think if you're just meeting someone, that makes a lot of sense. But at this point in my life, you know, I, I do spend like at least eight hours a day talking about everything. Um, it's kind of nice to have like a two hour window where I'm like, excuse me, um, we're going to let Aaron Sorkin do the talking. Uh, you really want me, how did I feel about it? Um, I didn't write uh, the social network, so how I feel about it is largely irrelevant. <laughs> you really, you want me to, cre uh, to critique David Mamet's writing? I'll have you know, he, he did write Glengarry Glen Ross, one of the most powerful ensemble films of, uh, of our time. We need some red hearts, please. It's just, just, there you go. If it's Delirium, we just bounce. I was waiting for that to take me back to Delirium. That would have been something. Ooh, that's interesting. We don't want Beyblade, but we, we like that we got some options here. But uh, even still, like, I, I think, like, that's kind of faded for me. Like, as time has gone on, I, uh, I don't really find myself that... I, I don't find myself saying I'll never go to the movies again. Um, but I definitely am also like, you know, I, I no longer feel myself like, oh, I'm gonna rush back and watch some garbage. <laughs> I think it's, it, honestly, like, I've never been the kind of person that, uh, was like, oh, you gotta see this in theaters, because it, otherwise, like, it, 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 it's not even worth the price of admission. I know I've said it probably 20 times before, but that's why I never actually saw Avatar. When it came out, everyone was like, it's a must-watch movie in theaters. I didn't get to see it in theaters. Okay, that's good. That's good. Uh, but keep in mind, you got Red Stew. Can, you think we could rebuild Red Stew? Because it, it is... Mm, <laughs> it do be lacking a little bit right now. Um, I don't know if we can rebuild it, but... We're doing something right. Um, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, and I never, uh, I never got to see Avatar because uh, everybody said you got to see it in theaters. I never saw it in theaters, and as a result, I never actually. Uh, at at that point, I was like, well, if I got to see it in theaters, it's not in theaters anymore. I guess I should just uh, never see it. And now the sequels are coming out, and everybody that loved the movie is like, I didn't ask for this. And I'm like, well, you know, I, I'm like one of the eight people on the planet who's never seen it. How do you think I feel? I'm like cautiously optimistic, actually, but... Okay, tarot cloth, now we're talking. I mean, this... Keep in mind, you know, like, I'm, I'm swinging for the fences here. Let's go. The tower. Beautiful. Exactly what I wanted. <laughs> Please. I mean, Hero's Medallion, man. I need the Hero's Medallion. We need we need the speed. Ah, oh, maybe we don't anymore. Um, what was... Oh, it's Cursed Key. That's right. Anyway, let, let's, let's farm up these items and then give it the old college try. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm... I mean, interested to see what happens with theaters. Having now uh, watched some, you know, brand new stuff as it comes out on digital. Like, I'll, I'll tell you, 30 bucks, it, 35 Canadian for Black Widow left a little bit of a, a, a bad taste in my mouth. I do understand, though, like, when people say things like, and this is not just in defense of Disney, I'm just trying to make sure the, the criticisms are fair. But when people are like, you know, I already pay for a Disney Plus subscription. Like, why should I have to pay to watch new movies? You're like, this, you know, it, it, I, on principle, I understand what you're talking about. Um, I, the way I see it, though, is like it's it's like a, a buffet that has like an additional charge for uh, premium foods. Yeah, you gotta go with me on this one. I'm, 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 I played the tape forward. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get to a place where literally anybody agrees with me. But I, I see it as being, you know, it's like a ten dollar buffet, all you can eat. They do also have crab, but 
If you want the crab, you gotta pay a thousand dollars. Okay, maybe. <laughs> like I get it. It seems like you're if you pay for like a subscription to something, why should you then have to also pay for you know anything else on top of that? But you gotta recognize, you know, when Disney Plus was originally uh, came out, you know, they they got like the Mighty Ducks movie from 1994 up, up there. You know, the, the the idea that you're gonna get a brand new movie that they expected to go to theaters without having to pay anything on top of the year. Ooh, original subscription, in my opinion, is, is a little... I don't want to say naive, but, you know, it, it, that that's not the original uh, terms of the agreement that were drafted up, I suppose. You know, if, if Disney had made it so that you get brand new theatrical releases included with your subscription, and maybe they will at some point, uh, I'm sure that it would probably, you know, it would be like maybe 25 to 50 bucks a month or something like that. Again, this is not in defense of, of the mouse, I'm just saying. It's it's very much not in defense of the mouse, because I, uh, I thought that movie was on the lower end of, of Marvel stuff. But, in the future, like, if, you know, let, let's take Disney out of the equation, you know, let's say, uh, I think, I think for, like, independent movies especially, it's, it's such a positive, because, like, you know, it used to be when there was an independent movie, it would come to theaters, like, that was not smart, uh, like, literally in, like, New York and Los, Los Angeles, and then maybe, I don't know, Toronto in North America, what the heck is this, the swarm, it's Halo of Flies, but, uh, Lots of them. Shot speed down? So as a result, like, if you ever wanted to see... Like, this is what it was like to try to watch... You, me, and everyone you know in, like, 2004. Uh, hey, just go see it at the theater. Oh, I don't live in uh, Los Angeles or New York, actually. Okay, well, uh, in that case... Um, wait... I don't know. 17 years for the, uh, the studio to decide it's never going to be a breakout theatrical success. Then they'll bring it to DVD. If you go to your local Blockbuster, there is a chance they will purchase uh, literally one copy of it. And just hope that like there's no other snobs that live in your neighborhood. As long as there's no other snobs that live in your neighborhood, you're, you're good to go. Now I'm like, dude, rather than see something like Kimi no Nawa in theaters? If, if they just gave you the option to pay like 20 bucks and watch it at home, I would be like, I'd be all about that. Not that I didn't have a great experience watching Kimi no Nawa in theaters, I'm just saying. Anyway, I, as you can tell, I'm completely bereft of anecdotes. <laughs> I need to start to... I mean, if there's ever a time to be bereft of anecdotes, I do think that uh, 8.29 a.m. on a Monday is a, is a completely acceptable time for that on a run that, it, it quite honestly, should have been finished realistically, like, I don't know, 15 minutes ago at minimum. Definitely we're taking Berserk in here. I, th I think the, the worst part about this is that we did all of this just to die to Delirium. Like, this is... Oh, unless... Stars? Lovers? Um, I think Lovers is not going to be great. But what we can do is at least pop it in here. And then we'll have a few more Spirit Hearts that we can... We can roll with. Oh my god, my eyes... Just, oh, and that's pretty good, too. Just don't, well, it gave us one extra damage, but um, just don't pick the, the demon hearts up. Wow, they gave us one demon heart off of a off of a lover's card. Thanks, Dark Bum. I really appreciate it. Gotta be a little careful here. We're, we're actually, like, can I just tell you? I think I accidentally sandbagged. I think we're going to win. I hate that I phrased it like, we'll never win. <laughs> and then, like, everything appears to be 
essentially completely fine. Oh, I picked it up with the bone. That's that's a bit of a bummer. Um, but you know, it just goes to show you the power of having like 34 damage. I, I, Mr. Fred is like unhittable for us right now. I will never, not that I ever have, but I, I don't think I will ever find it within me to insult Ghost Pepper. You know, someone told me there's two peppers in this game. Is that true? It's made even more humorous because the context of them telling me was like, uh, he will never realize that there's two peppers in this game. <laughs> and I suppose that, 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 that means that you are correct. We are taking some damage. I mean, this is a, this fight is just... I know I say this exact phrase every time, but it's such a mess. <laughs> I'm just like... Shots are coming in from all sides of the screen. Enemies are telefragging you like every two seconds. Oh, that's bad. Yeah, I, I can't even... I mean, we're really just trying to fire like ghost peppers in there. Although, hold on. We got we got the heart, that means we can chill. Feet. Phrasing. I gotta I gotta maintain my distance, but I also gotta get in there. I can't believe it. Okay, that's one of the <laughs> combination best and worst runs I think I've ever played in my life. I think I've redeemed myself for accidentally going into the, the wrong path there. So whether you wanna count that as as a zero because we didn't go to the beast or as a one because we did something even harder. More power to you, but for now, thanks for watching. It'll be a joy if you did click the like button. Also, a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See you. See you.